Yeah. Well, mainly what. And that's a very technical term too. As you hear that, oomph. And the oomph. Kretzer, once again, he's when he first went out on tour, he was uh, still probably a great field bowler. Didn't understand as much about the technology and the drillings. He always knew his symmetric drillings, and he knew how to drill things certain ways. Um, and he knew what, based on his speed, what was what would work best for him. And what he said was, you know, rolls up a little bit more like a particle ball. But what we see is it transitions faster, but still continues. That's where he's like, it still reads the lane. He loves particle balls, but he can't get him to hit. And that's the thing is, you know, a lot of guys like the way that look is in the lane, but they can't get him to hit because they're more controllable. They still change directions, give us a lot of motion, but sometimes they're more difficult to get us that, that final hit. And that's what he kept saying is this ball kept hitting. That's his big advantage to it. So if we go to Schlemmer, Schlemmer's our tour rep. From what I see out of the cell, uh, with the new cover stock, new core design, as opposed to the Odyssey, uh, what we just witnessed here in our little demonstration is the fact that the ball is going to roll off the break point, as opposed to not snapping off of it, being uncontrollable. Um, again, the guys on tour, the guys that are making a living and making millions of dollars, you take your Walter Ray, your Pete Weber, you know, now Mika, Chris Barnes, whomever, um, those guys are able to control the break point. And now, going back to your average league bowler, you get the guys and they actually get the ball to roll off the spot instead of boomerang off of it. And again, this ball is it's, it's top notch. It's, it's above and beyond what we're looking for. This ball with it being a smooth, continuous shape, and one thing we did see with the PSA today, as the ball actually rolls all the way through the pin deck. And that is ideal ball reaction. Watching the ball split the 8-9, rolling through the pin deck. Too many times, more often than not, I see league bowlers, even the best in the world, um, what happens is the ball actually hits the head pin and doesn't drive through the pocket. It actually does not roll continuously through the, through the back part of the lane. So we want to you know, really emphasize how great this ball is transitioning through the pins. And I think even your average bowler who doesn't have the rev rate or the ball speed, they're going to greatly benefit from this. You really have to figure out the transition. If you have a ball that blends that out, it's going to make your, your common moves easier. You know, instead of having to move 5, 10, 15 boards with your feet, you may only have to move 2, 3, maybe 5 boards at the most. Gradual, smooth moves because the ball itself is going to help Eliminate the, the, the violent transition, it's going to be a smoother transition. It's easier for the bowler to see because the ball is going to be rolling off the spot instead of reading friction and wanting to change direction super hard. So that's one thing to really maintain focus when you're dealing with your customers, making sure that they have a ball and they're able to understand ball reaction. More often than not, what happens is the average bowler does not understand ball reaction. They know they have a bowling ball, not quite sure what it does. If you explain to them, watch this ball roll through the pin deck, They'll have a better understanding, and then they'll say, hey, I think I have the right ball in my hand. I need to get more stuff like this. And that goes into the road grip line as well. You know, road grip top to bottom, we have a lot of balls, high end to low end, that all do, you know, all roll through the pin deck and create a good ball motion. So one thing to keep in mind when you're stocking those shelves. At the end there, Slimmer becomes a pretty good salesman. Uh, you got to stock those shelves. Make sure you get them out there. Uh, but he's a guy out there week in and week out. He sees all the different all the different patterns. He sees all the different surfaces and all these players. And his and his biggest thing when talking to Chris was that he said uh, the same thing. He keeps reiterating there was he could see the transitions better. It read the there wasn't such an over and under re read of it. Uh, and we get that you know some other products sometimes and sometimes you know we can blend them out pretty good. But he said the advantage he got here was it was very predictable. It's already created a pretty good buzz on the tour. Is that if you if you read his report on Rotogrip, where he talked about it's it's created the biggest stir. Those guys are really coming in, asking for it. What's going on? I'm gonna try this ball. I was watching such and such throw it. It looked really really good. Now they, a lot of these guys are free agents. They can throw whatever they want. And when they see something like that, they're a lot of times. I mean, they had, we just missed making the show with Traver last week too, because Traver just missed making it too. And you had uh, Kretzer and, and Deluts and uh, Leclerc didn't have such a good week last week. He's fighting with the release flaw. He, we had a conversation last night. Um, but Traver, a lot of free agents throwing this ball. A lot of them just missing making it. Uh, so it's created quite a buzz. And when those guys, best players in the world, are like seeking it out, that's a very um, a good thing. It's a good thing for me to know that, hey, we're going in the right direction. And it's a good thing for you guys to relate to your customers too and you see it that you're starting to see that more and more of these balls out there and you're going to see more and more on TV. This week maybe a little too much hook for him. There was a little too there was a lot of hook on the lanes this week. So, and the last one is Chris Sand. Chris Sand is our regional sales manager from the Midwest. He's from Michigan. He was there with uh, the guys doing the the testing as well. 
he pretty much got this whole venue set up for us. We appreciate that. Great bowler who's also a sales rep as well. He made the TV show in the uh, Masters, actually, in Reno one year. It. Yeah, it's hard to beat a three. Yeah, Parker shot 300 at the stadium at it. Imagine, let's see, t t and Chris is left-handed. The whole show was left-handed? <laughs> okay. Well, the one thing that we definitely saw today is a difference in the core as far as the cell was rolling down the lane. We definitely see a difference in, in that nucleus core in comparison to the Odyssey and the, uh, the Maximus II core. Uh, the, the cell and the, uh, the nucleus core, it, it maintained its PSA all the way through through the lane uh, as it entered the pins. It, it kind of gave you just a, a little bit different carry. Uh, it was smoother in transition. It was more versatile. It was more flexible. So definitely your average league bowler and going through transition throughout a, a, a normal league session is going to benefit from this ball because they're not going to really have to move their feet as much because it's not going to transition as much down lane. So we definitely saw a difference as far as pin carry went today, and we definitely saw a difference as far as transition went. So new technology in this nucleus core is really going to be a big plus in the future. Rotogrip has a fantastic track record as far as being user-friendly to everybody in, it, in its drill techniques. Uh, we give you a, a wide variety, uh, and this ball is really going to benefit because we're growing. We're, we're continuing to go forward. We're always pushing the envelope as far as a new cover, a new core, and we definitely see a difference as far as this ball reacting on the lane, and so every pro shop good should run out and get this ball and stock it because it's going to benefit your average league bowler to your tournament bowler, and I think the guys here uh, that we saw today bowling, you know, uh, as they're living are going to benefit with this ball, and they seem really excited about it too, so if they're excited about this ball and it's going to put money in their pocket, it's definitely going to put money in your average league bowler's pocket too. The salesman always comes out in the end in them. I mean, you guess to run out and stock your shelves up too. Uh, and, and talking to Chris Sand afterwards, and he just his, he kept saying it's just different. I can't explain it, but it's just different. Because I said, "What'd you think?" And he said, "It's just different." I said, I, and, I, "And he hadn't drilled one up yet." And so when he, after he drilled his up, he called me and he said, "Can I change the surface on this ball?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." He goes, I'm, "What's it? How's it roll polished?" And I said, "It's just going to be a little smoother." you know, through the front, a little cleaner through the front, but it still transitions and continues to transition. It's just a little harder transition. He goes, because I don't want to mess it up, because I really like this reaction right now, and I really just want to have a, a shiny version of it, too. So uh, he, he did drill another one, and he, he's really impressed with it, both with the surface and with the polish on it as well. Okay, so an overview of the cell. We just, uh, lots of different thoughts came out today through the videos, and, uh, and we've reiterated once again is the how much the ball, how much we can create continuous motion on the ball, how much we create that forgiveness at the break points, uh, how excited these guys are about it, how excited I am about it. It's, it's just a whole new direction for anyone in the industry to go. And, uh, you know, just the phenomenal pin carry. When Wiseman did throw some good shots the other day, they did disappear off the deck really good. He did throw a, a, a bad shot out of uh, that, uh, coming out of the commercial break. And those of you who bowl on tour, the commercial break is the toughest one to come out of. So uh, just an overall view, really excited about this ball. This is something that we really want to not be missed. This is some of the best technology, and uh, I've been the most excited about this ever. Uh, and just really enthusiastic. I don't want you guys to miss out on it, okay? So the other thing we're going to talk about today is uh, on, the, on the rotor grip side is we've changed uh, our drilling instructions. Uh, we've actually, Storm Products as a whole, we have salesmen that travel the road that sell both brands. They sell both Storm and Rotogrip products. And our philosophy of drilling an asymmetrical product is uniform amongst the company. We're firm believers in pin distances from the positive axis point and mass biases distance from the positive axis point and now utilizing the pin buffer, which is the distance that the pin is from the vertical axis line. And so instead of sending a mixed message and doing different types of drilling instructions for both Storm and Rotogrip, we have actually have a drilling instruction that is much similar to the Storm drilling instructions, the PSA drilling instructions, that utilizes the same factors. The, even in the shift drilling instructions, it's